Paging Dr. Juicy for Juicy. Sad dude. Okay. Recording. Sweet, and I'll just cut all this opening and yeah, and, and post and all that uh, kind of shit. So, so take us away. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're back with another installment of Doctor Juicy for Juicy Radio. I'm here with my friend Tyler White. Hi. And, and we're actually going to be talking about Black Panther, which are about a good February, March, April. About you know, I guess like a little month after the fact, or about two months late. But you know, fuck it, whatever. We've given everybody a chance to see the movie. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what our plan was. We were trying to. Uh, let everybody see it. But um, I went and saw it with my mom, actually. Uh, did she like it? She did. She actually really liked it. Because, I mean, we, we've been wanting to see it for a while. Like, uh, we're the only two people in my family who actually are, like, into... Th- I mean, my sister wanted to see it. Um, but she's like, I don't know, things kept coming up or whatever. So, uh, finally, I was like, you know, fuck it. We'll go see it. My dad doesn't like anything superhero related. Not for the most part. Like, he'll sit down and... Once he watches it... Then he'll be like, he won't actually even compliment. He'll be like, that was a, uh, he'll just make some kind of sarcastic remark. Like mm-hmm. we were watching Logan and like near the end of the movie, he's like, man, he's really, uh, s- you know, stacking those dudes up like plywood and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I was like, okay, so that's your way of saying this is an enjoyable movie. <laughs> but uh, yeah, she really enjoyed Black Panther. It was actually, I knew it was going to be good, uh, but it even kind of surpassed what I was expecting. Like it was just really creative in the sense of, like, all the tech they showed in the movie, it kind of gave me the same feeling of, like, when I watched the first Iron Man movie, and you see all, like, all of his cool tech, you know, and everything, and it's just, it's kind of new, you it, know? It is fresh, because yeah. it's somewhere we haven't been yet. Ex- yeah, that's the, yeah, because, I mean, in other Marvel movies, as much as I love it, um, even with, you know, Thor, Ragnarok, you know, taking place, like, in outer space, or the Guardians being out in outer space, this uh, really felt like, you know, it's, like, that best of both worlds, where it takes place in our world, but then it's like an entirely fictional world at the exact same time. So it's like that perfect middle ground, you know? In our own backyard. Yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, okay, but, well, I guess the big question of the hour is uh, what's up with that villain? Uh, oh, uh, yeah, you're talking about Killmonger. Um, yeah, Killmonger. I do like how they actually explained his name in the movie where uh, it wasn't his actual... Because I, I, I don't know anything about the Black Panther, uh, uh, just the storyline from the comics or anything like that. So when I heard his name, Eric Killmonger, I'm like, wait, is that his actual name? And uh, I'm like, I want to put it past Marvel to make that his name. I'm like, that's a little on the nose, but I do like how he actually got the name because of all the kills that he racked up whenever he was, I think he was in the military yeah, or something he, like that, yeah. Like, he killed people every day to get where he was at. Yeah. And he had marked his body all up and stuff. Yeah. I don't know. I thought that he was extremely charismatic. Um, yeah. It was something that, it was a, it was a fresh, uh, breath of fresh air for yeah. a Marvel villain. Yeah. Uh, even, I mean, Andy Serkis also as well. He wasn't the main villain, but, you Yeah, know. which I kind of figured, because, like, they set him up in Age of Ultron uh, for a little bit, and um, I kind of figured, like, he was going to be more like the uh, the side villain, like the kind of like the Scarecrow to Batman and the Dark Knight kind of thing. Like, he was there for a little bit. Well, I mean, even though Kill, you know... Uh, fuck, I just got his name mixed up. Andy Serkis' is a character was there much longer, but I do like how you got to see him... But then it's like, all right, he kind of passed on the, you know, the baton to Killmonger. He's like, all right, take it away. And he's like, all right. And then he shot him. Spoiler alert. <laughs> oh, he lived up to his name. Off camera. The next shot yeah. we get of him is his head rolling out of a bag. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I cry every time I see like Andy Serkis' lifeless head on in any situation. Yeah. And uh, and I cried many tears that day. Yeah, I um, I do like how uh. He was just, because like, okay, um, Killmonger had like a lot of depth and a lot of backstory and a lot of, you know, characterization. I really do like how um, Andy Serkis' character was just fucking maniacal. Yeah, kind of void of all yeah, of that. Like not, he, not yeah. Not deep or anything. He's just, we're going to get bloody rich. Uh, yeah. Going to get filthy rich and I'm going to buy me a new arm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to get more <laughs> face tattoos <laughs> and I might have another teeth pulled. <laughs> Like seriously, because I mean, like I remember I was like watching. I'm like, I'm like, Ian's gonna love him because he's just like, <laughs> he's basically Skeletor live action. He's like, kind of thing, you know. And uh, I really like how. Um, but at the same time, he was maniacal. But at the same time, he was uh, there. You know, there's that moment in the interrogation room where he's actually serious and he's like, "You have no idea what the fuck you're dealing with here, man." And he's like, he's smart, so he can kind of afford to be maniacal, I guess, or at least he thought because he didn't really. 
It didn't end very well, but... Uh, he didn't think it was going to, I don't think. Yeah, I, mean, I think he was extremely self-aware. I think that was the thing, nobody yeah. Nobody expected him to, like, make it to the end of that film. No, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I saw him, like, I give him well, half an hour. <laughs> like, seriously. I think he made a little past that. Yeah. Whenever I saw Martin Freeman, I thought that he was going to be, like, a, a five minutes tops. Yeah, I thought it was just going to be a cameo, because, like, I don't know anything uh, about his character from the comics. I think his name's, like, Eva... Everett Ross or something like that. Something like that. Um, oh, no, but, he did a great American accent. Yeah, he did. And it's so cool seeing him be kind of a uh, a badass because he's always, even though he's like a little bit awkward in this movie, but it's like intentional. Uh, he's always like, you know, he played like Bilbo Baggins, who's just like, I don't know what I'm in for kind of thing. Yeah, but or, Bilbo was a badass, though. Yeah, like, he on, was. In his own respect, compared to Frodo, at least. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> well, it's like there's a difference between being like an unintentional badass, and then this guy's just like, you know, he's been in the shield for a while. He knows his shit. Like, I like whenever T'Challa walks into the casino or wherever they're at, and uh, he's already there, and he's like, you're fucking my world up, man. Get out of here, <laughs> kind of thing, you know? Like, no, you, you can't be here. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I really... I really enjoyed that. It's, and, then, um, and then those girls started kicking ass, like, up Oh, in the man, yeah. And I, and I was like, holy fuck, I'm afraid of these girls. Like, yeah. So here's the thing. Like, I remember seeing the scene in uh, Captain America's Civil War where it was between um, Black Widow and I forget what her name is. Uh, um, but, at, like, T'Challa's, like, they're, like, kind of bowing up to each other. And T'Challa's like, as much as I would like to see this fight, yada, yada, yada. And then you actually see her kicking ass in this movie. I'm like, honestly, I would like to see that fight just to see. Because, like... You know they're both badasses, uh, you know, respectfully and all that kind of like, shit. So. Now we're now we're plotting like what contrivance can we come up with? Yeah. to mash those two guys together. Yeah, well, no, I mean like even in uh somebody posted a screen cap from uh the inf- the Infinity War trailer where it has like Cap and Black Widow meeting up with um Black Panther and I know I'm gonna get so much shit for this because I honestly can't I can't remember what her name is but uh. I forgot what her name is, but she's like walking up to Blackwater and they're just like kind of like staring each other down. It's like for a fraction of a second. And uh, I was like, a little, okay. A little exciting. Yeah. Like, um, one of the things I really liked about Black Panther is how it's like, even though it, it didn't really set anything up for other movies. I mean, the whole ending with him, like, I mean, okay, this was a big setup where he actually said, hey, we're going to share our tech with the world. That's important to the rest of the universe. But they, from what I can understand, they weren't like setting seeds, not to the extent of like Age of Ultron, or like Civil War, Thor Ragnarok, you know, yada, yada, yada. No, this it, is like a it wasn't too line. like ham-fisted. It had its own yeah. story to tell, and it told it pretty well. It's very Iron Man 1-ish. That's what I keep thinking of, like where it's like its own story with little seeds from other stuff well, kind of planted in it. It's formulaic. Yeah. You're, yeah. Like, pretty much anytime we go see a Marvel movie now, we can understand that we're walking into a Disney production that yeah. has a good budget and a good solid plot behind it. Like, yeah. rock-solid plot. Yeah. Uh, but... Uh, it's the characters that we're really like interested in, and I think yeah. that more character development is always better. Uh, so oh, for sure, we're focusing on these ideals, and we know now after seeing Black Panther what uh, T'Challa what he believes yeah. is uh, is the right thing to do. Like he doesn't, he can't sit by the sidelines and watch like you know the world blow itself up, but he also can't become a an African arms dealer on top yeah. of that. So he goes with a more diplomatic approach that we see at the end of the film. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, kind of like that middle ground. And I like how he, not to cut you off, uh, how he confronted his, you know, his dad in a sense about what his dad did. You know, he's like, listen, like we created Killmonger. You know, he like he's very responsible. And I like that about him. He's got a little bit of a sense of humor to it, a little bit of a sass. He's a little bit more... He's easier, he's not by much, but like a little bit easier going than like say Batman or whatever, you know? Yeah. Where uh, where they're both like focused and driven and all that kind of stuff, but he's like able to, you know. I feel like a lot of Marvel characters are like that though. Because I mean, yeah. like, like you said, Iron Man. Yeah. And, uh, one that like really calls out to me is Ant-Man. Yeah. Because I, maybe it just has something to do with Paul Rudd. Like, yeah, just having such a unique take on the superhero. It's just Paul Rudd. Like, yeah, I mean, he's very self-aware. Like, even in the first one, he's talking about uh, um, he's talking about the, like the name. He's like, is it too late to change it? You know, he's like very aware of like what people think when they see this. You know, right. kind of thing. So, uh, it's kind of funny because I was joking around with somebody. I'm like, Black Panther's kind of like Lion King if Mufasa fucking killed Scar at the beginning. You know. Uh, yeah, and, then, and then he died from somebody else yeah. later in the film. And yeah. So it's more like Lion King 2. 
basically because I mean one point five. Well, yeah, because I mean, like I remember <laughs> speaking of Disney, like uh, like Lion King two. I think it had th- there's a kid that Simba's daughter ended up falling for. But yeah, I can't was, remember how he's related. Scar's it was kid or something like that. Uh, it's like his Scar's son or like his nephew or something like that. I forget what the can- he has some kind of family tie, and I'm pretty sure the kid like had a scar on his face. I don't uh, think it was his nephew. Uh, yeah, it's some kind of nephew. he has some kind of tie. I can't remember what it was. I know his name started with a K, I think. But I know my friend Victoria is going to be like she's, she's like a huge she's Lion King fan. Yeah, right now. yeah. If she is listening, I don't even think she she's off doing other stuff in I think Vegas. But uh, I hope you're having fun out there. Yeah, seriously, I'm like best of best wishes and all that kind of stuff. Hope you're enjoying the Supernatural episode tonight because I know she's like. Huge Supernatural fan. Oh, my God. Yeah. Let's get back yeah. to the MCU, yeah. shall we? Yeah, I'll say, like, going back on track, but yeah, Black Panther, Um, it's, I uh, like how it was a, uh, with, like, he was established in Civil War, and so you got to see, a, like, a, it's it's really great how they did it. Like, you got to see a taste of, like, who he was and kind of, like, his origin a little bit, because, I mean, like, you know, in Civil War, spoiler alert, that's when his dad, you know, was blown up. And so you see that, and then you see him kind of coming. It's kind of like in Spider-Man Homecoming, where, like, you had all this stuff happening, and this was kind of like his homecoming, you know? Yeah. Uh, and back now to his he, place. Uh, it, it reminds me of, I don't know, surprisingly, uh, Zack Snyder film, uh, 300. Whenever Leonidas yeah. is going out, he has, to, he has to leave Sparta, go and survive in the wilderness, and he comes into conflict with a wolf, and yeah. he kills the wolf, and then he comes back, and everybody's like, he's the king of yeah. Sparta. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, it's kind of the same situation where he went out to go find Andy Circus, came back empty-handed, but he's still king. Wait, was Andy Circus in? Uh... He was in Ultron, Age of Ultron. Oh, okay. No, I thought you, for a split second I thought you were saying like Andy Circus was in three hundred. I'm like, whoa, fuck. Are you serious? That would be cool. Uh, would... but no, I'm gonna be honest. Like, I've never uh, actually seen three hundred, which is bad. Like, I should see it because like I people give, and it's probably gonna either raise credibility or probably destroy credibility but i enjoy uh most of Zack snyder's movies you know like i watched Watchmen, the director's cut i thought it was a faithful adaptation even though some of the casting choices for like for the like the casting choices for the most part was great but like could have been tweaked a little bit <laughs> uh you know it was it was good it was a solid little, very little visual would have been nice <laughs> yeah uh, of course that was like all over in the comics every time i turn on the page i'm like oh there it is <laughs> and uh, I remember, like, I got it for Christmas, like, the graphic novel for Christmas. And my cousin, Cindy, who at the time, I think she was, I forget how young she was, uh, she started flipping through it. And I was like, out of shut. I'm like, no, 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 you you can wait on this. <laughs> Alan Moore isn't for you, not yet. Soon. Yeah, very soon. <laughs> soon, but not, not yet. But um, I do like, again, like, because you mentioned it earlier, we get a chance to actually appreciate the characters before we see them with other characters, you know? Like yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like it, it's a fluid universe that we're all just kind of like floating through. Yeah. You can expect to see things like the Hulkbuster Iron Man suit now. You can yeah. expect to see things like Thanos and the Infinity Gauntlet. You can mm-hmm. see the, you know, it's just uh, those kind of things are just things that have been cropping up for the past decade in these films. Yeah. So, uh it's not unusual for us to, whenever we see somebody from a previous movie because we've been <laughs> kind of psychologically trained yeah, to go be- and see every new Marvel movie because we know it's yeah. going to be good, and if we miss it, we're not going to know what's coming next. Yeah, we've uh, kind of been accustomed to it. And uh, not only that, but staying after the credits and all that kind of stuff. It's, just you a, know? it's a great machine that, that can really just churn out some money. Yeah, it's uh, like, it's shit's money! <laughs> and, well, I mean, you know? like, that's also that's one of the reasons that these stories have been so good lately from yeah. them is because they have a good budget behind the plot. Yeah. Uh, and plus, I mean, like, this has been building up since, like, 2008. I remember when uh, the very first Iron Man came out. Uh, I think I was in high school. It was a while back. Uh, yeah, I remember sitting down and watching it for the first time and uh, thinking, because, like, before that, most of Marvel's movies are really hit or miss, but it wasn't Marvel. It was Marvel in association with 20th Century Fox or with Sony. So it wasn't, they never had full creative control until Iron Man and then forward. You know, with their characters. And slowly uh, gaining them back. Yeah, exactly. And so, like, before then, we had, like, X-Men 3. And then, Sp- like, that was 2008. So, right before that, I had just gone off the trains of seeing Spider-Man 3 and seeing X-Men 3 and seeing, like, just the, really just not good movies. The dark age of the, yeah. of the superhero franchise. Yeah, and then I was, like, sitting down in Iron Man. I'm like, please don't suck. Please don't suck. Please don't suck. Because I read the novelization before it, and it was good. It was so solid. and had, like, a really good, like... I didn't expect to care so much about Tony Stark. Uh, and so sitting down, I'm like, oh, please don't fucking suck. And then by the end of the movie, I'm like, this was 
good. I was enjoyable. Saying, yeah. And then after that, The Incredible Hulk came out. I'm like, please don't suck. Please don't suck. It didn't and suck. It didn't. It was it was enjoyable. It was a solid movie. It's not yeah. really one that like they want us to remember. Yeah. They were more like, let's it's, focus on Mark Ruffalo. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's not really advertised. Like, yeah. I mean, like it's accepted canon because like Samuel L. Jackson shows up at the end. Yeah. He's with, all like... Um, Oh, I came in and I went and talked to Tony Stark. Now I'm here talking to you. And guess yeah. who we're talking to next? Thor. I've yeah. got it coming up next uh, next year. Just uh, look out for that movie that's coming out. Yeah. It's <laughs> like just kind of winging out the camera. I, yeah, because like, I'm trying to remember uh, at the end of Hulk, I think, yeah, Tony Stark showed up and was talking to the general. The general. And uh, right. he knows like we're putting a team together and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and we're sitting there. I'm like, oh, man. And then there's that drum roll. Yeah. Like I still remember, like when the first Avengers was coming out, and just how pumped up I was to see the uh, just all of them together. And here's the thing, because I'm not trying to shit on, uh, I'm not about to try to shit on DC, because honestly, like I love DC, like I love Marvel and DC. Most people are like either one or the other. I'm like, you kind of get the best of both worlds if you enjoy both. DC is very like modern day Greek mythology. You got these larger than life characters and these larger than life settings like Metropolis and Oa and uh, Gotham, and and I enjoy that. And then with Marvel, you have just really, really just, it's set in our world, you know? And the, the characters have to be more. Yeah. Like, they're, it's modern they're, day just, people. they're just real people dealing with being superheroes. Yeah. And so it's a different take on the subject. Like, uh, yeah. of course, everything, everybody has their own particular taste behind yeah, it. Yeah, I think that's the main um, thing. People I, love being competitive. Like, human beings, I was like, I don't even know what side human beings like, oh. Uh, people love being competitive by na- like by nature. They're like, my thing's better than your thing, and here's why, yada, yada, yada. Well, I, I mean, I'm sure I would piss some people off by saying this, but I think that yeah. uh, the consensus across the board is that uh, the cinematic universes yeah. between DC and Marvel, uh, Marvel, like, wins hands down. Oh, Just, yeah. Of uh, course, way more money, and, like, every year. Uh, but yeah. the stories themselves and the characters they don't have to die on the the set. Like they existed well before that. They could easily yeah. exist beyond that. Batman, the animated series was one of my favorite shows growing up. Oh man. Like, yeah. Uh, Saturday mornings, like on yeah. the WB, like I did that theme song. Yeah. God, like Shirley Walker doing the Danny Elfman theme. My God. <laughs> and then they went and turned it to like Arkham and it made it even better. And I'm like, my God. But I think like you're actually bringing up to uh, like the point that I was about to make was, um, it's just because, like, with the animated series, they're so good with, like, characters, and they focused on that, too. Yep. And, like, that's the thing that Marvel does. And the reason why I was so excited to see the Avengers wasn't because, oh, it was the Avengers. I honestly could give a shit about that because in the comics, I never really cared about Iron Man or Captain America. I was always about Daredevil and Spider-Man, so I didn't care about them. The movies, like, convinced me to care about them. And so when I saw them together, I was like, okay, I, I know who they are. Like, Cap is, like, one of my favorite characters now, and it's because of Chris Evans' portrayal of him. Like, I just love it. Uh, w- regardless of how different it may be from the comics or how similar it may be to the comics, and with DC, like they're so busy trying to play catch up, and you can you can t- you can just feel their desperation. They're like, we just need that money. I, re- I wouldn't say DC. I'd say Warner Brothers. Uh, but we had Man of Steel, and I was like, that was it was it was pretty decent. You know, it uh, was good. To be like, honest with you, I I did not like Man of Steel. I thought it yeah. had a lot of pacing issues. <laughs> See, that was the one thing I did have a problem with. Like overall, I enjoyed it, but yeah, I could feel like there were scenes missing. You know, that's kind of what it felt like. Uh, and it, it wasn't like they were cut. It's like they were never intentionally meant to be there. Yeah, it felt a little. Their parts were just choppy. Like you we know? we jump from like. Uh oh well, Superman is a kid and he saved a, like a group of like yeah. kids or whatever, and now he kind of feels bad about it because he's gonna like be outed as like a, a freak or something yeah. like that. So he stays quiet for a few years, and then the next shot we see him, he is Superman like flying over people and stuff, and you're like, yeah, ha- yeah. Like how the, did we get here? The pacing was really strange in areas because I mean, I, I was expecting. I remember seeing the trailer for Man of Steel, and I'm like, oh man, we're about to get. The Batman Begins of uh, Superman stories, where Batman Begins had like you know it was nonlinear, it was kind of going, it was going back and forth. Oh, it's Nolan esque. Yeah, but it was like, but the way he did it, like the pacing was really, really well done. Like you got to see him like as a college dropout and as a kid, and then as you know training with the Ra's al Ghul, and yeah, it was all balanced back and forth. It all flowed. Yeah, I mean, there was a, it was a busy movie. There was yeah. a lot of stuff going on. So. Well, yeah, all of his movies are pretty... Yeah, yeah. they're all like that. Uh, Batman Begins, for me, it was the first Nolan movie I'd ever really like watched that I yeah. was like, okay, this is a Nolan film. And um, I didn't know, I didn't realize this at the time, but the movie itself was exhausting. Yeah. Uh, like, That's by not the end, about, yeah. I was just like, oh my God, this is over. Yeah, like, you definitely it, get your money's worth out it of it, for going sure. And yeah. Going. And you're like, 
He, okay, is he gonna is he gonna kill Liam Neeson here? Yeah, is it, what's gonna happen? Is he gonna mind his surroundings finally? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> like, it's like Karen's uh, death was not your fault. <laughs> I love the uh, line right before he like leaves him on the train to die. He's like, I don't have to save you, and he's like, Whoosh, I'm in the night, <laughs> and he's like, just flies out, and I'm like, everybody's like, oh, you technically killed him. I'm like, you couldn't carry liam neeson and his like you know with his cave they would have both would have died so it's self-preservation at that point yeah and he tried to kill all the people he loves in gotham yeah so where's the trigger man (laughs) yeah like um it just like the pacing for man is still and like and then it just got progressively worse because then they were like like they kept releasing movies that we just didn't give a shit about they were like they announced suicide squad i'm like why like, I don't, I could give a shit about this. Fan service, the movie. Yeah, and then they were like, and then I saw the trailer for it, and I was like, okay, this is actually kind of interesting. Like, they're going to do a deep, introspective, psychological look into the villains of, you know, DC. They did not. They turned into a fucking comedy because Warner Brothers freaked out at the last second when they saw reviews of Batman versus Superman, and they're like, no, 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 we got to change this, and all that kind of stuff. Well, see, that's what happens whenever, like, instead of just trying to make something and let it be something it's trying to be something more than what it is yeah or trying to be something that it's not you know it's something it's that a, it wasn't really meant to be like yeah it all started out as like you know issue based comic books anyway yeah uh like there's no I mean, nowadays that format doesn't work like on the grand scale probably it's uh it's more cost effective to make a movie about these old characters that are familiar. Yeah. They're still kind of alive in like the nostalgia spectrum or something like that. Right. Um so I don't know, like it, it's not a bad idea to show us those characters that we like. Uh and but in trying to make them different and fresh isn't a problem either. Yeah. It's just um ham fistedly like just throwing them all together and acting yeah. like you know, oh we'll just the plot will just justify all this. And yeah. the characters will just be flat and we'll just leave it and it'll hey, it's a film. Yeah, that's the biggest thing it'll, because it'll I mean money. the like with the uh, BVS, like even though like I'm in the minority this, I watched the extended cut and like I just I appreciate it for what it is. Like I, I love like in terms of what it is, like it's like when I see Batman and Superman, I'm like that's as far away as from what I expected or what I wanted for the characters. But if I look at it as an elsewhere world kind of movie, I'm like I I enjoy this because like it did everything that it should have done in that context. One yeah. of the infinite Earths. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of how I picture it. Like the jump drive scene where they have like all the heroes popping up. That's still weird for me, regardless. But other than that, like I, I well, just take it as it is. That, but that's you know. another thing. Like I, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that outlook, but yeah. uh, it is one of those things. Whenever you look at a at a piece of art, and then you have to like justify it yeah. so that it fits within your like world yeah. that you have created in your head. That what is the DC universe? Whenever like whenever I picture it, usually like I see like Gotham and like Batman as a silhouette like, yeah. on a building with like white glowing eyes. Like that's just kind yeah. of what I picture when I think about you know DC. Uh, in the new films, I like I've kind of refrained from going to watch them just because I know that it's a deviation from that and it doesn't fit within what i believe to be like the characters yeah my yeah. version of gotham that i've created in my yeah. head uh and as i don't know uh, all these things are gonna keep coming like we're all we're always gonna have a new star wars yeah we're always gonna have sure. a new batman super yeah they're shitting out star wars like crazy they're like you get a sequel you get a spinoff you get an origin story dude uh, disney's you know? doing it too um yeah uh, like Disney is on fire right now with making these movies. Yeah, but I didn't expect the, them to come out like th- that quick. Cause I remember when they first announced it, and they were like, "You were gonna have this and this and this." I'm like, "Okay," and they have like that Rogue One, two Star Wars episode movies. Uh, Han Solo is coming out. Um, you know, I don't know. But, I might be a little bit excited about that Star uh, the Han Solo. Oh, the Han one. Solo one. See, I've never been like a huge Star Wars fan to begin with. I'm not knocking it. It's just, it's just, I never really got around to watching it. Um, Different stories, but, different folks. Yeah. Uh, like, of course, it's got a huge appeal. Like, yeah. I grew up watching, uh, like, I, I, on repeat. Yeah. Empire Strikes Back was, like, my favorite film. Yeah. Like, I watched it over and over and over again. Yeah. Back to back sometimes. I would, like, <laughs> I would take the VHS and I'd put it in. I'd watch it all the way through, get to yeah. the credits, rewind it, and then rewatch it right there. Yeah. Like, back I've to back. I've had movies like that where I'd, like, burn it out. Like, I remember... Uh, my parents were probably just sick and tired of me watching The Mask. Like, that was my movie, like, back when I was a kid. Like, I would just oh, watch man. the hell out of that. Your parents let you watch The yeah. Mask? Yeah, like, they oh were, Oh, my uh, God. 
the ending freaked me out though when I was a kid for whatever reason. Like whenever the bad guy would put on the mask, dude, that, that's scary. Her, it's like, yeah, that's scary. it just still creeps me out now. I'm like, damn, that's pretty creepy. But um, yeah, like going back to uh, just you know, characterization, all that kind of stuff. Whenever I saw like Justice League, for example, uh, you know that that I was. It's so weird because like it was just the polar opposite going into it that I was for the Avengers because just like I know who Batman is I know who Superman is and then I know who Wonder Woman is and so going to look at going to see that I'm like yes I can't wait to see these characters but um I feel like they were solely riding on the fact that the only reason you should care about these characters is because you know them from the comics you know they didn't actually establish them that much at least not as well as they could have I guess um Wonder Woman Batman Superman they did because they had Man of Steel they had Wonder Woman's origin movie which is so good and the Batman was primarily the focus I feel like of uh BVS so we got to see his version of it and so like those three yeah and then Aquaman and Cyborg and Flash are just kind of like there you know they you're having to like you're having to introduce and like show three new characters and just have to I feel like they're saying you have to like these characters because they're in the comics and boom you know, they've never had any movies kind of setting up for them. No reason to, like, give a shit. Because, like, I remember whenever I saw uh, Wonder Woman, and I'm like, man, like, I like I love this. This is so good. And so when I saw the trailers for Justice League, and I saw her in, and I'm like, I can't wait to see how she interacts with uh, Superman and with uh, Batman and all that kind of stuff. You know, it just uh, helps build the world, you know? I mean, yeah. It's, uh... And with, um... And that's one of the reasons, like, I, I really love Marvel, because, like, they just have... They're uh, they're just kind of just going along with the story, you know. They're just kind of uh, taking it, you know, bit by bit. They're not like this has been a fucking ten year endeavor building up to Infinity War. It must make them filthy rich. Yeah, and it has. That's the crazy part because I figured with like um, they've been like I feel like with uh, DC's movies they are like they're throwing everything but the kitchen sink in. And uh, as Evan like to likes to remind me, as far as BBS goes, they did throw in the kitchen sink because there's a scene where Batman literally takes the kitchen sink and knocks the shit out of Superman. So you know, there's that. But um, you feel I feel like they would have just taken it like the slower road to like you know make money off of individual movies, and then boom, they would have been able to just grow from there. Uh, I mean, heck, I think that it wouldn't have been a terrible idea to just start out with a Justice League film. Yeah. To like uh, coming straight out of Dark Knight Rises. Don't worry about Man of Steel. Don't worry yeah. about Suicide Squad. Just go straight to what the project that you want to work on. Yeah, I Instead feel of like yeah. working so hard and having to backpedal through a bunch of crap that yeah. uh, they, they didn't even really want to do in the first place. I, I felt like it was just like we need to get this done so we can get to this. We got to get this done to get to this. And I mean, you're right because like I would much rather have like origin stories before it. But I'm like, fuck it. If y'all want to do this in the beginning. Just say screw all the other stuff and just make it. Then they were going to actually do a Justice League movie. Now that I think about it, they had um they've had it in the works for uh, a little while now, or for a while now. Uh, because I know like George Miller had like a like an animated motion capture esque Justice League movie that was gonna be made, and I saw it and it, it was I wasn't actually a fan of like what he was putting out. Like the casting on the kind of stuff was kind of weird and the approach for it. I was like, eh, but uh. But yeah, I mean, they should have just made, like went ahead and I'm like, here you go, here's the characters, you know. I mean, like you can get away with your characters being underdeveloped in that situation because we don't know them. Yeah. And the fact that like, you know, oh hey, this is uh, this is like Justice League. Th- this is going to be the beginning of a whole universe if the movie does well. Yeah. Rather than saying, okay, well we're gonna have all these scattered heroes just like another company that we know that's yeah. d- doing really well right now. Yeah. And then we're just gonna take all those scattered heroes and just kind of force them together in their own film and they're gonna be in a movie together yeah. and that's gonna be the movie. Yeah. <laughs> and we hope you like it. Like, yeah, it's I would have much rather that approach. I mean, they did it with uh the Just League cartoon, which, you know, cartoon and animation is completely different, at least in terms of T V shows. Is a completely different medium uh, no, see, than like live I, action or whatever. I didn't even you know, watch the Justice League like animated series like that. Like I yeah. had seen a couple of episodes, but it wasn't something I was always jumping to go watch. Yeah, uh, mostly probably because I had the idea like in the back of my head that like, oh wait, all these superheroes are like really strong, and you put them all together, like yeah. nothing's ever going to be able to stop them. Like, yeah. where's the drama? You yeah, know? where does where does the conflict come in? And it's so good because, like, I love, like, Bruce Timm's, like, Justice League. Hey, like, I love his animated universe that he created with, like, Superman and the Batman. And, like, and then he had, um, you know, the Justice League series. Like, he just, he uh, he took them and expanded on the characters, but he never lost sight of, like, who they actually are. He didn't take them. Because so, at a certain point, when you change a character and you update them so much to the point that 
you know, they're not even the same character anymore. That's a problem, yeah. you know? Um, and you just need to go ahead and write something else. Exactly, write you a new to, character, you know? Yeah, stop, like, draining, like, yeah. stuff. Like, uh, yeah. I don't, I don't know. Like, I, can com- a, I can complain a lot about yeah. the kind of choices that people make and stuff when they're making these movies. Right. Um, like yeah. I, like, and it's all about, like, deviation from the source material and stuff, typically. Yeah. Uh, personally, I that stuff shouldn't bother me. Like, I know, yeah. like, oh, people are going to interpret it however they're going to interpret it. But right. uh, sometimes it just grinds your gears what they do. Yeah. Like, the choices they make. And you're like, why would you choose to do that? Yeah, it's like, it, why are you the way that you are? It's like, are you, are you doing that for the sake of... Of doing that? I feel like sometimes that actually is. They're like, we need to, especially with like... um Fanforstic? Well, there's that. I was thinking of the Amazing Spider-Man series too, because like, as, I mean, I don't know. Like, I lo- I grew up watching the Raimi movies, and I love those movies. Even 3, as with all of its problems and shit, like, which had a lot of problems. I could tell like, at the heart of it, of like, what it was trying to do, so like, I can appreciate that. I'm probably biased anyways. But with Amazing, like, you could tell, like, at least with the first one, and even the second one, I guess... Uh, they had already established Spider Man like in a live action movie, and so you could tell like they were just taking what was already there and just kind of like taking a spin on it, you know. Yeah. And they were having to change it because it's already been established. So they're like, we have to make this a little bit different, so it's not like a copy and paste of like that, that was a feeling I got whenever yeah. I watched the first one because it was like the the parts that I was missing from Peter Parker's life yeah. in Amazing Spider Man. I feel like I already knew what happened in those gaps because I'd watched the same Raimi movies. Yeah, but uh that Peter Parker was very different. Right. Even his characterization was different too because everybody's like, oh, he's the closest just because Spider-Man was cracking jokes. I'm like, he was cracking jokes, but I mean like, there's a spot in Amazing Spider-Man 2 where it's like at the beginning when he's stopping uh, Rhino from uh, just running over people with like, you know, the great Paul Giamatti being cheesy as fuck in that scene or corny. I mean, I thought he did fantastic. Yeah, he's (laughs) just like, I am the Rhino, fear me, yada, yada, yada. And, like, he's, like, crashing through cars left and right. Suddenly, like, lands on the roof. He's just cracking jokes. And I'm like, okay, this is me being nitpicky. I know because I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. But I'm like, I feel like he would be multitasking and cracking jokes. Like, he'd be, like, trying to stop him while saying shit because that's his whole shtick. Yeah, it, it's kinda, it is kind of Japanese, isn't it? Whenever yeah. you kind of, like, freeze frame on somebody's it, reaction shot. And they're like, yeah, you are doing something. Yeah. And then and we the, cut to, like, the action. And then yeah. they drop down from the ceiling and, like, kick out yeah. some people. And then it zooms in on their face. And they're yeah. like, yeah. Got milk? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. I mean, yeah, like that's is a point where you just kind of deviate too far away from because, like, my biggest thing with Amazing Spider Man, um, one, anyways, was like he didn't become Spider Man out of guilt over his uncle's death. I didn't feel like he did it because he was like, "Fuck it, why not?" Like, <laughs> you I'm, know? Yeah, I'm Spider Man now. Yeah, because like I remember he saved the kid on the bridge. He's like, "This makes me feel good. I should start being a hero now." I'm like, "What about the death of your uncle that you could have avoided? That that wasn't it?" Because that's what the whole core of Spider Man is like. He is guilt ridden constantly because of the death of his uncle and that he could have uh, he could have stopped and that's what I loved about the Raimi movies because they caught that you know through all, all the movies it's there you know and uh, I thought that's essential to his character and they just kind of like kind of glossed over it you know oh they were trying to set up a bunch of other stuff with like oh, God, his yeah. dad and his mom yeah they died in an airplane or something yeah it had something to do with Oscorp and blah 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 yeah they, there's some evil like stuff going on and look at all these little things they got the vulture wings and the yeah and the Doc Ock tentacles and oh man and uh, uh, uh Gwen Stacy dies <laughs> <laughs> yeah and they're like remember that scene in the comics that was intense that was cool right I'm like yeah it was a good scene about it that was about it yeah <laughs> like so the movie i mean yeah it's just uh, they the same problem that i have with that was like the same thing i have with a couple of other movies where they were so busy setting seeds up for other movies for future movies like they're setting up like sinister six they were setting up um the next four movies of amazing universe and i'm like focus on this like yes foreshadow for potential future shit but don't blow your load all in one go and be like, you know, this is like, don't pull a Doug's first movie, you know? Or like, that's kind of cocky. Because have you seen a Doug's second movie? No, they only had one, you know? <laughs> okay, so uh, I, I want to point this out because uh, you're right. Uh, Age of Ultron did the same thing. Yeah, that was an issue that I had with it. But, however, uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe was doing really successful up until that point. Yeah. And then whenever uh, they released something that seemed like a, a really long moving poster for all the movies. That yeah, it looked like a future. very long trailer for like the future movies, uh, you know? It, it kind of was, with some James Spader thrown in there Yeah, uh, every once in a while. Yeah. Uh, but 
they had the capital to just kind of like blow it on that. Yeah, yeah. Say, oh, this is going to be our Ultron movie. Remember yeah. Ultron from the comics? He's yeah. super powerful with the benefit of hindsight. You know, yeah. Like, just, yeah, and the ca- so here's yeah. the thing, like, the casting for that was so fucking good because James Spader was, like, perfect. I remember watching, like, The Office after that for the first time and seeing him in, like, season eight, I think. Towards the end. Yeah, it was near the end. It was, like, the second to last season. And uh, hearing his voice, I'm like, that's Ultron. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, like... I mean, it makes yeah. sense. Like, I mean, other than like, you know, uh, there are some things that Age of Ultron got right. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's the thing. Yeah, like the fractioning of the team, or they they were kind of setting up for Civil War. There was heart of like the heroes getting hit at their like their like their uh, soft spots, I guess you could say. Yeah. Um, and so like I could see what they were aiming for, and I think that's the biggest thing is like I could see like what they were aiming for. But I just didn't actually see it realized, you know. I can see what they're aiming for, but it was like lip service and then action. Yeah, where they were like, "Oh, well, we're gonna play with this idea of the team falling apart, but the team's not actually gonna fall apart until the next movie." Stay tuned. Right. It's gonna be Civil War, and it's gonna be tight, and Captain America is gonna kill Iron Man. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Like that's the thing. Like, and I can also feel like Joss Whedon was just like super fucking tired. Like I could feel that just like through the writing. Like plus, I could tell like they had like left out a lot of scenes. Yeah, I know, like, I was reading behind-the-scenes interviews of, like, how we had to cut out shit, um, I guess, concerning Hawkeye to fit in foreshadowing for Thor Ragnarok, which was kind of weird because all this shit's going on. Thor's like, cool, uh, I'm having a nightmare that my world's going to blow up, so I'm going to fly off to space really quick. I'll be, like, right back. <laughs> he never came back. Yeah. Well, I mean, he did, but, like... Like, later on. Yeah. Even, like, the uh, cinematic uh, group shot, like how they had in the first one, where it's, like, spinning around. Whenever they had that in the second one, I didn't feel like that was earned as much as, like, in the well, first one. Well, it also one, happens yeah? within, like, the first five minutes. Well, I mean, they had the opening shot, but then at the very end, uh, whenever... Whenever, like, all the robots are coming yeah. in and they're smashing them up and you yeah. can't tell which way's up, but it yeah. still looks pretty cool because... I mean, it looks great. All this know? shit's, like, smashing together. Yeah. yeah. Be- because, like, at the beginning, like, they're like, oh, we're not friends. Remember that. We we just work together yeah. kind of situation. And then we end on a really high note, positive, like, energy. Yeah. Like, everybody's like, for Hawkeye's family. Yeah. Yeah. And Quicksilver. <laughs> and, and, and that guy. Yeah, the guy the, with the super speed that we, got shot. That we didn't see coming. <laughs> yeah, we three times. Him, we can't call him Quicksilver because he... Maybe, like, not as quick as he probably should have been silver. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's... I don't know. I mean, even, I feel like even, like, an old... I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> like, it's just, uh, I don't know. Because, like, I was looking forward to the twins on this one. Here's the crazy part. Like, I love the Russo brothers. That's not crazy. But, like, um, the crazy part is, like, I didn't really give too much of a shit. By the end of the movie for, like, Age of Ultron, I didn't really care about Wanda Max and, or Maxim. I don't even know how to pronounce her fucking last name. Uh, Scarlet Witch. I didn't really care too much about her. I didn't really care too much about uh, Quicksilver, even after all that shit went down. It wasn't until, like, um, Civil War when the Russo brothers got hold of the, you know, writing. Yeah, and or then, at least the writers and did. And then her envision had a little tension yeah. or whatever. Like, they actually added depth to her and all that kind of stuff and just kind of fleshed her out more, at least did it in a way that I gave a shit. And I was like, yeah, I love this. Like, this is cool. It was. It was. You know? Uh, like, I love, like, the Russo brothers have been such a blessing to have like because you know like with them doing because like again like it's so weird like captain america for me is like the underrated or no the um are the movies i didn't expect to love they're the ones i expected to watch and just be like okay that's cool i can't wait for the next avengers movie you know but then you go in and you're happily yeah. surprised every time where yeah. whereas you go into a dc movie and you're just kind of let down yeah like i'm sitting there watching i'm like come on because i'm in a still i walked out i'm like great action i'm so glad to finally see superman throw a punch on live screen uh, since like oh, yeah. uh, Superman, I don't even. I'm trying to request for peace, but I know he did in <laughs> three, four. The yeah. quest for peace. It's like nuclear man or whatever the fuck nuclear his name is. Nuclear man. Yeah, it's like <laughs> nuclear man. Because I know like he had that junkyard fight in the third movie, which is actually kind of cool, but the storyline was shit. But uh, yeah, I saw that. And that was the one thing I liked about Man of Steel is like seeing him fight Zod and just unleash hell on him. I'm like, yeah. And then he like snapped his neck. I'm like, too far, <laughs> but okay. I would have been okay with like the final bite, final bite, yeah. final fight with Zod. If that was like the whole film, yeah. I would have been really happy about Man of Steel because he would have truly have earned that title. Yeah. He's the Man of Steel. Yeah. He can rip through buildings in a single single bound. Yeah. You know, like, like seriously. <laughs> and that's the thing, like, um, like, I don't know, uh, yeah, I was totally going somewhere with that. I completely lost my train of thought. Uh, fuck. Cabal Man of Steel. 
Okay, yeah, with uh, like Cap. Um, those are the movies that I, like. I you know I watched the first one. And I'm like, holy shit, this is so good. Like, I love his character. Like, from the moment when he's, like, in the alleyway getting his ass kicked, and he's like, I can do this all day. I'm like, all right, I'm in. Like, I, I like this. And then Winter Soldier, I was like, first one was de- or, uh, first one was really enjoyable. This should be pretty cool. Fucking blew me away. I was like, oh, my God. Like, the fight scene with Bucky, how it's just so raw and just fuck. And then Civil War just happened, and, like, just even better than I was hoping for, you know? They, uh... To be yeah. fair, I think that like Bucky Barnes has been like a really influential character in the cinematic universe. Yeah, I'm sick of him. Yeah, <laughs> I think honest. I think somebody else said the same thing. But he, uh, he showed up at the at the, after the credits of Black, Black Panther. Panther. Yeah, and I was just like, "Will you <laughs> go <die?"> away? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, will you please go? The you know he's probably gonna be like the next Cap. Either him or, uh, I mean, if they follow the comics, I think he takes up the mantle. It's either going to be him or, uh, I'm just guessing, because I'm pretty sure Cap's going to die in Infinity War. Spoilers. Yeah, spoiler alert. Well, I mean, it's not even so much to spoil. This is like a speculation. What the hell? Oh, my God, I need sleep. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I just looked down, saw, like, where somebody marked me with, like, a black Sharpie marker. I thought it was a bug, and I, like, freaked the fuck out. (laughs) Yeah, I saw that earlier. I didn't ask you about it. Yeah, I thought it was something else. (laughs) Fuck, I need sleep. Uh... Not as much as Montana, though. Apparently, she's running on, like, two hours of sleep. So, that's pretty sad. Or pretty bad. Or both. Shout out but, to you. Yeah, shout out, shout out to Montana. Like, I hope you're doing good. Uh, if you're hearing this, it, we're like, how far are we in? I don't even know how long this video is going we're on We're about for. 40 minutes in. Shit, yeah. It's probably go- an okay time to wrap it up. <laughs> yeah. Um... I'm trying to think, is there anything else we want to talk about? Because, like, we kind of came full circle back when you, in a roundabout way of uh, bringing Bucky back to the ending of Black Panther. I'm trying to think, we even say everything that we wanted to say about Black Panther? Probably not, but whatever, uh, fuck it. I, uh, um, I'm trying to think of, this, like, one last thing. Oh, one last, I will say this. Um, The fight scenes in that movie were fucking great. Like, the scene between, like, the first fight between T'Challa and Killmonger Oh, that was uh, intense. Yeah, it's just raw. And then fucking... Uh, then he lets gravity decide. Yeah. He um, just throws him. Oh, 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 Forrest Whitaker, Forrest gets, Whitaker. Gets, gets killed. It was me. Yeah, and he's like, ka I'm like, Forrest Whitaker, no! <laughs> like, uh... It's like, I didn't even think you were that guy, but you were that guy. Yeah. You've been, with this, you've been in this whole movie. We didn't know. We didn't like, know. seriously. <laughs> like, that scene was great. Like, seeing the tech in that movie that was developed by the sister was great. The humor was great between, like, the sister and, like... You know, uh, T'Challa, like, they acted like brother and sister. It was cute. Um, you can see, like, there was actually, like, the character of T'Challa like, grew from the beginning to the end where he grew, he, he walked in just kind of following his father, and by the end of it, he's like, I gotta set up my own path. Um, the final fight, like, I love this shot when T'Challa's, like, walking back up to Wakanda, or, like, back to, like, the home base, I guess you could say, and his arms are all stretched out, like, fucking fight me. <laughs> and, uh, like, I love that. It was so good. Um... I love the uh, the car scene with um, where she's like remote control piloting the car, and they in- eventually use that later on for Everett Ross to control the you know the plane. It was pretty tight. Uh, just so much good shit, and like I love the characterization of it. It's very like the storyline was just very character driven. Had a good plot and good story and had a good everything you know did, I, yeah. I actually did think the white guy was gonna die for wakanda at the end. yeah like i was yeah. like wow yeah <laughs> yeah I th- honestly i thought ever i mean like i didn't know if he was gonna pull a colson you know if i, he I was thought just, he was gonna die yeah. i was like wow like uh, he's yeah. sacrificing himself for wakanda man. yeah like wakanda forever yeah <laughs> which yeah for the record <laughs> so you know that just reminded me of um you see gal gadot commented on um the deadpool 2 trailer with him doing like the uh wonder woman yeah. Uh, signed, yeah, in the trailer, and she's joking. She was joking about it, but she's like, "Yeah, he stole my thing." And Ryan Reynolds, I saw his comment, and he was like, "In Canada, we call this borrowing." <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, it was it's so fucking funny. He had two different versions of like his response. I guess one must have been on Twitter, one must have been on something else. But uh, the other one was uh, um, bar uh, like uh, stealing is the highest form of flat of uh, larceny or some shit like that. <laughs> But it was, it was fucking great. Um, oh, no, he said, okay, he said imitation is the highest form of larceny or something like that. Oh. Or most sincere, some shit like that. But it is fucking great. It is classic Ryan Reynolds. Like, he's just great. He's way funnier than us. Go, yeah. Go listen yeah, to Yeah, I'm going to say, yeah, go watch, like, just go read his tweets where he's talking about his kid. And he's, uh, it's just, it's fucking great. We're sitting there talking about this, we're giving him more publicis, uh, publicity, though. But yeah, Black Panther, really good. Uh, I definitely uh, would recommend it. And it's, can't wait for Infinity War, actually. Yes. Like, I'm really pumped about that. The trailers look amazing. And I do like how Marvel has only shown, like, two trailers. Most of the time on this kind of shit, like, I remember when, again, I hate comparing this, but I know just like, it's a different 
thing entirely, but Just League had like five different trailers, all extended for just uh, you know, for uh, no, not for just for BVS, and then um, not so much as for Just League, from what I remember. But I just remember them having a shit ton of trailers, and for this, like the biggest event for Marvel, uh, they have like two trailers out, and that's it. They've had a lot of TV spots, but so far only two trailers. And I like that, because, like, honestly, they've shown a, a pretty good bit, but they still haven't shown, like, not shit, you know? Yeah, they, like, we really don't know what's going to happen in it. Nah. Like, once we sit down, like, well, we might be able to, like, suss out, like, how the film's going to go. Right. Uh, unless it takes, like, a like a nosedive, like, some yeah. of the more recent movies. Yeah. Uh, just kind of calling out a few by name, uh, The Last Jedi. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> A Wrinkle in Time. Hey, we actually have somebody coming in. Hello, um, Erica. Hey, what's welcome, up? Welcome to the show. Yeah, we're doing like a podcast. Hey, what's going on? What's the remain hearts? Oh, is that just like... It's just a box full of groceries. Oh, nice. Okay, We cool. are making burgers tonight. Oh, nice. Shout out to burgers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hashtag awesome. I right. wish I could have that. I can't have iron. My doctors <laughs> are like... We're like, nope, you can't. You can't have red meat ever. I'm like, but I love pepperonis. They're like, yeah, we know. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. Yeah, I'm like, that's all we got to tell they you. They don't now. love you. Yeah, not at all. Okay, I think uh, that's a good place to wrap this up. Yeah, I'm a... Uh, yeah, I think that's actually uh, everything. So, uh, yeah, Black Panther was good. Really enjoyed it. And, uh, yeah, go, I guess I'll just... Go check it out. Buy it. Uh, yeah, definitely. It, it should still be on theaters. It's a movie, and it was good. It gets the Sean Bertucci seal yes, of approval. D- most definitely. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I gave myself carpal tunnel. <laughs>